Hey guys, I'm Adam from the Utopia of Nerd News, and today we will be reviewing the season 6 of True Blood. Now, True Blood over the last couple seasons, honestly, let's say since season 3, has been kind of on a roller coaster of it's been going downhill. Uh, farther and farther every season, season 5's ending was atrocious and I wanted the series to stop. I'll get that out right now. I wanted them to just be done. It was getting so bad and the beginning of this season honestly it was just kind of the the connection to the season finale of last year and it, it was brought down because of it. I didn't particularly enjoy like the first episode specifically um, but I suppose you have to do the connecting things that that were attached to the previous season. Um, so once you get past the first few episodes, but something weird started happening when I was watching somewhere in the middle of the season, maybe episode four or five, where I started to enjoy it. It wasn't great, but it was good. I was like, hey, sweet, let's see what happens in the next episode. I'd say probably somewhere around where, you'll know if you've seen it, where the camp starts. And it was good. I wanted to see what was happening next, which is mind-blowing. I haven't had that in True Blood for years. And I would say the last two episodes, specifically the second to last, were really good um, and exciting. And I was like, oh, I have to watch the last episode after I saw it. I was, I was, I was intrigued. They, they finally got me again, which is nuts. It, it really was nuts. Um, they had a few new characters this season. The first one was Robert Kaczynski, and he plays a huge role for somebody they've been building up for seasons on the show. And he, if you don't know, is very busy this summer. He was one of the, the big faces in the Pacific Rim movie as well. And so it's a very big summer for him. Probably the best he's ever had as far as an actor goes. And I thought he did a terrific job in the season. He was definitely uh, heartfelt and uh, showed a lot of emotion. In fact, he played a very different character from his, his Pacific Rim character. So I really got to see a lot of depth to his acting ability. And I, I really grew to appreciate his ability as an actor a lot because of this season. And the fact I saw him in Pacific Rim earlier with a different character altogether. And he used different accents. And it was definitely really impressive. Um, I, I definitely loved uh, his character in this. Even though there were a few things I thought were kind of weird with it. But whatever. I'll move on. The other one is Rutger Hauer, I believe. Or something like that. And he's a he's a, one of those guys. You'll definitely recognize him if you see his face. And he played Nial, I believe it was pronounced. Or something like that. But he was he was pretty awesome, actually. Um, I really enjoyed his character as well, um, and the things that go on and happen with his character. Um, even though I think the whole premise of it's like weird and kind of head scratching, but I think that's part of the problem with with the things I didn't enjoy as much in this in this season. We'll go more into that in a second. But he does a, a terrific job of being of being kind of the wise elder kind of a character. Um, I, I won't say who or what his character is because they will go into that a few episodes in, but he he does a good job. I, I, I appreciated the things he brought to this role. Now, as far as some of the things I didn't like as much about this season, um, I felt there were a lot of inconsistencies. And I remember as I was watching it, I could I could pop them out and I could see them, and, and maybe I should have written them down because I can't exactly remember all of them that had uh, in in detail uh, as much as I was as when I was seeing them but there was just some weird things like like how they they say stuff in previous seasons years back and then they don't keep things exactly the same or whatever like nobody knew what Sookie was going into the first few seasons of the show it was a huge mystery nobody knew it the thousand year old vampires didn't know who she was and then once they announced what she is uh, then, then everybody knows who, who and what she is, and I don't know, it's just like, and this season, it, they just go into that even more, and they add more ridiculous plot things that they just, they just decided to write in, because hey, you know, Suki's no longer special, so let's make her special again, so she goes from being a fairy, for those who haven't seen the other ones, to being a royal fairy and the princess of the fairies in this season, where she's got special magic powers that they decided to add to her character that, oh, she just didn't know about before, like a magical spirit ball thing she can summon out of her hands, and if she shoots it, she's no longer a fairy, because she's a half fairy. 
and and if she hits somebody with it, they'll die no matter who it is, and then she'll be normal human again, and and she can pull it out at any time, and it won't drain from her abilities. But yet, if she does anything else with her fairy abilities, uh, like heal somebody, then she'll get a little bit weaker with her fairy ability. It's just really weird stuff that they just keep randomly throwing into the role to try and make her more special. And I, I don't like it. Um, it. It's stupid. It's, it's written in plot devices uh, to try and make the lead character more special because everybody else is getting more special. If you haven't seen this, Stephen Moyer's character has become a vampire god in this season and he can, he can do everything but walk into daylight. He can get stabbed in the heart with a stake, nothing. He, he can pick things up with his mind with telekinesis and explode them. It's just some stupid, ridiculous stuff with him that you really have to go through in the beginning part of the season especially, where he like, I don't want to drink blood, or whatever, he doesn't say that, but it's like, I'm not going to drink their blood like a normal vampire, I'm going to crush a human into bits, and then pull it all out of them by particles or whatever, it's really weird and stupid. I think it's part of the problem that, that they've had since the earlier seasons, uh, the first season in particular, they they were a more grounded show. It wasn't about having over-the-top supernatural things happen. It was about these grounded characters in a world of and what it would be like to have if vampires announced that they were real and they wanted to live alongside humans and not just secretly in the dark killing them. And they created this true blood, so that it, which is an artificial blood that vampires can drink even if they don't like it as much. Um, so that they don't have to kill humans. It was a much more grounded show, and the farther they've gotten this, the more they felt like, instead of, hey, let's keep this about the characters, we have to, to upscale things and make them more ridiculous and more outrageous, and that was part of the problem. Fortunately, they kind of grounded a little bit of that, at least the, the story art purposes of it, um, and brought it a little bit back down to earth. They jumped off the crazy train, I guess. And they tried to make this more about the characters again, which is nice because the acting in the show has always been one of its strongest suits. They have some terrific actors in it, and and it's a shame when really good actors get paired with really bad writers. And and you know you hate seeing it, but that's what's happened with it. And, I, and like I said uh, in the beginning of this review, I wanted the show gone. I wanted it gone. And to, to be honest, I still want it gone, but I want it gone uh, going in the right direction. I want it to to. You know, be like, hey, when this show started, it was a really good show, it was really high up here, and yeah, it dropped some in the middle, but it started going in the right direction towards the end, and they ended on a high note. That would be really, really a nice thing for it, because I feel bad for the middle seasons. Honestly, I do. They're, I have no interest in watching them ever again. Uh, unlike the first few seasons, which I have on, on DVD and Blu-ray, it's good to see the show in a go in the right direction. That's basically my, the sum of my entire review. Sit through, take the first few episodes uh, with, a, with a grain of salt, and take solace in the fact that the show will get better, even though the last episode was kind of weird and I felt like they might be trying to end the series, but they didn't. In fact, they add something new in, and in fact, the, the new thing that they add in to have the next season, and hopefully the last, is something that's different and unique, and it's not crazy like Bill becoming a crazy vampire god, or anything weird like that that completely alters all the characters and stupid stuff is happening, and you're just like, stop it, you're pissing me off, True Blood. No, it's something that's, that's a bit more to the original show, where it seems like it could be a, a more grounded thing. Um, I won't say what it is, but I'm fine with it. I know some people, I guess, have, have been anti it, but there's always going to be people who are upset about different things. Um, I'm fine with the grounded approach, and I'm, 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 I'm excited enough, at least, to see the next season, which, again, will hopefully be the last. Um, but I will see you guys next time on the Utopia of Nerd News. See you next time, guys. Bye.